Thank you to David Guyton for sending over these parts. Let's get this opened. So many mysterious little packages. Okay, so I think this is for polishing, looks like. Let's start with this little tiny one. I'm expecting some sort of finger plates. Ooh. That's awesome. This is so cool. I've never worked with proper metal pieces. You know, I do the 3D printed versions of everything, but this has this weight to it and it actually holds its shape as opposed to the flexible filament, which is pretty nice. <laughs> I'm gonna keep those together. Let's do the next set. Ooh, these are cool. So the edges are beveled here. I like that, that's awesome. Oh, thank you, an arrow so I know which way is up. Much appreciated. <laughs> I love getting packages, and I think that's probably why I put so much time into packaging up anything that I ship to someone like super nicely and like an all in little sample packages like this because it's so fun to open it yourself. It's like I want other people to get that experience too. The color is beautiful and actually I'm interested to compare how well I did with my painted steel finish. Let's just compare for fun. Okay. I mean, it's a little, a little different for sure. This is definitely a little more on the weathered side, but this is gorgeous. I don't have to cover this up with weathering if I don't want because it's already beautiful. I've got the tutorial video pulled up for this pattern, so I can go ahead and make sure I'm putting them together correctly, although they are very nicely labeled. Thank you very much for that. So I have a lot of different ideas for what I want to do with this. I haven't decided which one I'm gonna go with. I want to just take some time to think about it see what sort of concept is going to work best with these beautiful pieces and feature the metal. So yeah, but I think the sizing is actually looking really quite good. Pretty sure I just did that backwards, so I'm going to go ahead and swap those fingers because I think that the, the smaller one should probably be the pinky, not the pointer. Using the Doom Wielder template, I have created a 3D model so that I could then 3D print the right hand for this pair of gauntlets. I've got all my steel parts and then the 3D printed equivalent although they're still flat, so I need to go ahead and heat mold these so that they have the same shape as the metal pieces. Some of them are gonna be a little bit more complicated because they've got these sort of compound curves here that I think I'll be able to get okay on the 3D printed piece. Uh, most of this I can mold directly over the metal pieces. Uh, then I've got just a couple of other kitchen tools here in case I need something else to shape it around. Just random curvy type things that might be helpful. And I'm gonna try it with just my small heat gun because I don't wanna accidentally overheat these because they're very thin. This is one I, I already did a test from the first print that didn't come out quite right, it didn't stick well. So I just used it to test the curve and it seems to work pretty well. This was the simplest one, I've already tried curving and again, that worked pretty well. So I'm just gonna continue with curving the other pieces now. Turns out it's actually quite easy having the metal pieces and the plastic ones. All I have to do is just set the plastic on here, melt it into that. As soon as it gets just a little bit soft, just press it down into the metal. And now I've got the same curve. Just let that cool. They're so thin it hardly takes any heat at all, especially with as hot as it is out here today. Even the curved one here, this is fine. It works the same way, even though it's more of a complex curve. press it in. If I didn't have the metal ones, I could use things like these measuring spoons to make the curves, but since I do have them, it makes sense to use them so that these will, in the end, match also. I don't think I got that quite down all the way. Since this is going to be my internal surface and it's so thin, it makes more sense to mold it on the inside of the parts. And then the thickness will be added with the carbon fiber. So then that will build up the thickness to equal that of the steel. Now this one is mirrored. It's not the same left to right than like most of the finger pieces, but I think it'll still be okay. Yeah, that works. I don't know, 
not sure if this one's going to work this way because this is so different left to right. Uh, I'll give it a try. I'm playing around with an idea that's inspired by the game of chess for the overall direction of this costume and character that's based on the steel parts. So I'm thinking that a good material to bring in would be carbon fiber because that's going to provide a good contrast between the steel, which is bright and shiny, and then the carbon fiber, which is shiny in its own way, but it's more dark and deep. You've got the weight of the steel versus the lightness of the carbon fiber. I think these will be some interesting interactions and also just visually interesting. So we're going to kind of mix up the parts for those. So the first step is to go ahead and prep the carbon fiber. We're going to be skinning those 3D printed parts. I'm working on covering the pieces in the carbon fiber now. The curves are fairly simple in this. They only start to get slightly complex in a couple of places. So I'm going to use this double-sided adhesive. I'm just going to stick that down. This is going to keep my weave in place hopefully while I position it on the piece and when I go to cover it in the resin. So we'll see how this works. Just peel off that paper backing and I'm kind of paying attention to which way I have the, the weave running on each piece because I want them to have the same direction basically. Stick that down. And then we can trim away some of the excess, but I'm not going to trim it too close just yet. Not till after it's covered in resin because I don't want it to start fraying. And that's ready to get set up for resining now. This turns it into sort of a sticker. Which you can kind of work with a little bit easier, so hopefully this works out well. Except it does want to stick to my gloves too. Ah, get off. There we go. Kind of coming out cool, so hopefully it uh, looks even cooler once it's covered in resin and trimmed up and everything. The little Kevlar string along the edge is very difficult to cut, that's for sure. Trying to make sure it's lined up with the vertical here. Nothing's too close to any edges. There we go. I'm not going to wrap it around the edges because I'm going to be sanding these anyways and beveling them a little bit to, to mimic the look of the steel, like the style there. Okay, time to get these set up and ready to cover in resin. I'm temporarily mounting these so that they'll be easier to cover in resin. So to do that, I'm sticking some just regular sewing pins up through the back of this doubled up cardboard at an angle. And then I can just temporarily glue a little scrap of foam to the back of each piece and slide that onto the pin. And now it's going to at least kind of stay put. So I've got all these pins do this. I think that'll work pretty well, but I guess we'll find out. Always got plenty of scraps of foam, so this is one of those times where you can justify saving them all because they really do come in handy. Just putting just a dot of glue on the back. Blow on it for a second so it's not too over overly hot. We don't want it to stick all that well. And then just press it on here. Add a pin and slide this guy in place. There we go. Yeah, something's wrong. Oh, it's not. It's not cool yet. There we go. <laughs> I'm just gotta do the same thing for the other ones. And this larger piece, I added a couple of extra supports so that it'll be stable all the way across. I've mixed up a small batch of epoxy resin, and now I'm going to apply that to all of the pieces, making sure that it soaks all the way through each of the parts. I'm thinking it's 
instead of cutting out the parts this close, even though I did leave a border, it still is just a mess wanting to fray and the leaves is coming up, so that's just no good. I'm thinking maybe if I tape off a whole square uh, with like masking tape beforehand and cut out just that square, that might be a lot easier to work with. I'm completely unhappy with the finish because it has all these little pulled out bits, but the overall concept is pretty cool. I think that can definitely work. Now that the rough cut's done with the scissors, I'm cleaning up these edges using the Dremel and giving them a little bit of a bevel like this steel. The problems with the first one were that it was fraying so much and then the little bits in the middle are even starting to pull out. So this is the first test of this new idea. Super easy to cut. Both sides of that spot are sealed off so the roll isn't going to continue to fray in anywhere in that area. I've got watered down wood glue. I mean, I could use something like um, super glue. It would dry a lot faster, but the nice thing about this is it's easy to cut through. And I want it to be a liquidy glue because it'll soak all the way through that way. Now I'm going to just kind of mush it in a little bit to make sure it does go all the way through. And once it comes through on the back, you can see where it is. and just rub some glue on from the back too. It's so easy to cut now with the glue. Obviously this is fully dry. And I'm just cutting along the center of each glue line so that all of the edges stay attached. And they're attached all the way through. Not just along one edge, front or back. Got a few little bits of the paper in there so I think I'd put it on a non-stick surface the next time, like maybe on a silicone sheet or something that the glue won't stick to. These pieces have been sprayed with spray adhesive now. So I'm gonna test that out instead of the Rolly kind of adhesive. adhesive. And I have all of my carbon fiber pieces that have been pre-cut. The edges are all glued and they've been arranged kind of how they go with each piece. Some of the pieces are having a little bit of a hard time sticking with just the spray adhesive. They kind of peeled back out. This larger one though seem, seems okay, so it's just because they're so small and there's tension on the edges from the glue. The wood glue is stiffer, so it kind of wants to pull it flat again. So for those areas, I'm just going back to a little bit of that tape and reinforcing the edges that want to peel up just to make absolutely sure they don't start peeling out when I am adding the resin. So I'm just adding a bit under here. And then that sticks down just perfectly. So the, the double-sided tape stuff is definitely stronger than the spray adhesive in this case with these small pieces. For these larger pieces, the spray adhesive seems actually pretty okay. I might still reinforce some of the edges, but it's just so much bigger of a surface area. There's not as much tension on the edges. Simplifying the process a little bit this time, instead of using pins, I'm just gluing the foam straight to the cardboard because they kept wanting to come off of the pins and I don't really need to pick them up once they're set down on the on the uh, backing board. So I made the same little supports with the scrap bits of EVA foam and then I'm just going to add some hot glue to the bottom and glue that straight to my cardboard. A huge thank you to David Guyton for making this project possible by providing the templates and these gorgeous steel pieces that are the inspiration point for this whole costume character that I'm working to build over the next several episodes in this series, however long it ends up being. In the next episode, I'll be adding more resin to these pieces and testing out this uh, new version with the glued edges to see if that gets better results. And then we're going to be moving along with building a character out of this base design and see where we can take that with the concept, combine with the base template, and work towards making a complete character from that design. Thanks for sticking with me through this long video and I hope you had fun and I'll see you soon.